Hi, my name is Sawan and I'm working on Bowman Fly. It's a 2D platformer with 72 main levels, each with its own unique background. In the previous video, I showed you how I made the very first backgrounds for this game, and in this one, I would like to explain how they became what they are today. First of all, there are two tricks that I use to fix the colors of my games. The first one is using adjustment layers in Photoshop. The ones I use all the time are brightness and contrast, levels and sometimes hue saturation. When I finish a picture, for example a new level mockup, I use those filters to sort of see them from a different perspective, to see how else they could possibly look like. By fiddling with their options for just a few minutes, I often end up with much better looking colors than what I used initially. And then, since I use flat colors and put each of them on a separate layer, I can easily adjust them to fit what the filter has generated. And the second trick is doing basically the same, but with the post-processing options available in Unity itself. I think that it's obvious that the color palette I came up with myself is much less interesting than the one it became after post-processing. And that's why I took a screenshot of the results and applied these colors back to my images in Photoshop. At this point, I was quite happy with the colors of my game, but I feel like there was still something else I could do to make the backgrounds better. Two of my favorite games in terms of backgrounds are Hollow Knight and Ori and the Blind Forest. One of the things that makes them so good is motion. Both of these games heavily rely on the parallax effect we discussed in the previous video, but in Ori specifically, the world feels very alive because it's constantly moving itself. I wanted to achieve a similar effect in my game too, so I made simple squash and stretch animations with the help of Unity animators. And when it comes to parallax, when I saw it in combination with the horizontal and vertical movement in Blow and Fly, it just didn't feel right. The backgrounds were flying all over the place, they were very dizzifying to look at, and it was hard to place them precisely where I wanted them to be. And when something doesn't fit, my solution is always very simple. Without the parallax, but still with the animations, the backgrounds look just mwah, perfect. I am just kidding of course, they are still very far from perfect, but I kept working on them to the best of my ability, and in the next video you'll be able to see if they became any better. If you'd like to time travel and see how the game looks like right now, a few months later, you can do so by joining our legendary raid over on my Patreon page. And for now, I thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.